everybody. It's day four of Fright Fest. I don't know where Luna's gone. Hey guys, it's day four at Fright Fest. Oh my God, I'm so tired. But don't worry, don't worry, I found some help. Say hello to the sock puppet of horror. Hello. How did you become attached to the project? Mm. And did you know it was reality based from the get go? I'd never heard of Johnny Frank Garrett. It's quite an amazing story. On Halloween, a non, 76 year old nun called Sister Tadea Benz was murdered and raped in her bedroom, in her convent. Um, the police could not find the person who did it. So they ended up arresting, after having failed to find anyone, this, this young boy called Johnny Frank Garrett. And on the night of his death, he wrote a curse letter and he basically said, whenever you, anyone of you die, that will be me. And, and so thereafter, um, people in the community of Amarillo mysteriously started dying, um, which is all, all absolutely true. Luna! I play a professional downhill biker. Kind of a wild sort of thrill ride through multiple genres set in the world of, uh, you know, downhill mountain biking and extreme sports. Me and my boyfriend go to Chile to compete in, uh, uh, in a race and we find uh, this stranger in a car who got into an accident. And from there, they're kind of thrown into a sort of crazy blender, you know, filled with cults, Satanism and Lovecraft. Originally it was going to be a short film, so how did that change? I had a look at it, and you know you read a short and you kind of go, wow, all the beats are there, everything is there, but it's too packed, it's too crammed. And I said to Sean, you know, it needs to breathe, and why don't we do it as a feature? And he said, uh, oh yeah, yeah, right, okay. But if you want to do it as a feature, you go find the money and then you produce it. So, did. so tell us a little bit about Let's Be Evil. Okay, um, so it's a, it's a sci-fi thriller that sits in the in the horror bracket. So it's it's not blood and guts, um, but what it is, it's a it's a it's a point of view movie. So 95% of the movie, the audience feel like they're wearing these glasses that the characters are wearing. The three characters that you see in the film, um, they're put into a kind of lottery to be um, chosen to be put into this underground bunker to help teach the children of the future. All these children that are grown up in, well, with these Google glasses. Augmented reality glasses, um, and there's something not quite right about that situation. So it was based on Tim Reese's um, stage play, That's Stone it. and Crows. That's it. We've put in this psychological element of him hearing the, the almost religious voices which tell him to do these things, um, albeit that it's druidal and uh, American culture rather than, say, Christian, you know. What was the biggest challenge making the film? In clement weather, we're out in all weathers, we're in a wood, for God's sake. We had storms one minute and glorious sunshine the next, and you had lighting difficulties. Technically, yeah. it, was, it was a real challenge. Um, but it also had a strange kind of advantages because one of the, the, the bywords that I was using, let's, let's react to the environment, let's be reactive. If it rains, Let's embrace it and let the rain be part of the scene. And if it suddenly stops raining and the light changes, then we'll embrace that as well because that's nature. And you're here for an extra special reason this weekend, aren't you? Yeah, it's my major comeback. I'm hoping that people over 70 are going to remember that I was once, you know, really famous. And uh, it's great to be back. Well, I'm actually here to support David McGilbray, who's releasing his short films I think it's next month actually, but they are available here. And it was, I'm also was to see the documentary or mockumentary that goes with it. Uh, we just showed um, Horror Icon, which is an extra on the Worst Fears DVD that we've got coming out September the 5th. Because I'm in it, but I'd completely forgotten all about it actually. It was done, yes, it was done about 10 years or so ago. I met David, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s, and at that time I was, a, I was a draftsman. And he said, you should be working in the film business. Why don't you get a job working in film? And I said, well, I don't know anybody. And he encouraged me to write letters to everybody, and I eventually got a job in the film business. So was there anything that ha actually happened to you that was even too weird 
or outrageous to include in the film? Some of them are stoked. Like I did this meeting and I was desperately trying to pitch my film. Like, you know, because I was speaking to one of the top people and I was trying to pitch my film. And all he kept doing was like showing me photos of him on his motorbike. So I could never actually get to the end of the pitch because he was just like, look at me on my motorbike. Look at me on my motorbike. Look at me on my motorbike. Look how good I look. look. And I'm like, what? And then he was like, go on, stroke my beard, stroke my beard. You know you want to stroke my beard. I'm just like, what? what? I'm trying to pitch my film. Yeah. And now he keeps sending me emails being like, oh, I'd really love to hear about your film. I'd love to hear about everything in your film. And I'm like, well, you could have if you hadn't been sharing your midlife crisis with me. <laughs> What? No, I don't have any more interviews to do. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Take the microphone. I'm done.